What's going on, Deb? Yeah, that's good. We'll go with that. Welcome back, guys. This is the third installment of the Ultimate Infernal Max series. Last episode, we made a ton of progress. We finished the combat achievements for the Corrupted Gauntlet. On top of that, we secured ourselves a lovely set of crystal armor. Oh, and we also learned a pretty valuable lesson in humility. Shout out to my friend Matt for being the voice of Bryn. Kinda of forgot to thank him because that last part was getting pretty long already. Speaking of things getting long, get your mind out of the gutter. This intro is getting kinda of long, but there is one more thing I want to say. I made a goal at the end of the last episode to reach 1000 subscribers by the end of the year. I worked especially hard to get this episode out before the end of the year to help reach that goal. I'm not asking you to sub right now because I haven't delivered anything yet. I will say though that I've begun working on something pretty special for the 1k milestone. I honestly can't wait to show it to you guys. Enough of all that though, let's get into it. Big surprise here, but we're going back to the gauntlet for unfinished business. Before we do that though, I need to rewind the clock a little bit. Remember when I said last video that you won't be hearing any more scuffed audio? Well, I felt like I had to make an exception for this. The night that I got my fifth crystal armor seed and made the crystal body, my wife actually ended up sitting and watching me play, which literally never happens. She does not play this game and probably wishes that I didn't play it either. <laughs> She has, however, been really supportive of my YouTube ventures so far, and you can count on her showing up in this series in one form or another. Anyways, here's a few clips of our conversation when I asked her what she thinks of my gear. Alright, what do you think? The bird head is a little right? weird. <laughs> it is a little weird, huh? You're carrying a giant match. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of it like that, actually. Exactly what it looks like. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a janky match, but it's a match. It's all crooked. <laughs> what about that? What do you think? Why are you wearing a purple skirt? <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand. This thing is incredible. <laughs> it's a purple skirt. <laughs> you know how long this took me to get? <laughs> What, you don't like my shirt? I just, like, I don't understand the, like, the little slit thing, like, to I, the side of your belly button. It's just... That's, that's a good point. I don't, <laughs> I don't what happened to your guy. face? <laughs> I chose the... <laughs> I chose the blackest of black skin. Not for any racial reasons, just because it looks really good in some armor. <laughs> I also don't have eyeballs. <laughs> Also, your forearms are huge. <laughs> yeah, it shows the jack. Oh. <laughs> it clips. It... Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's true, dude. It kind of disappears it's there. Like, you kind of look like a hobo who like stole somebody's basketball shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I'm following you. You know, fashionscape is like literally what my friend and I did when we played this in like fourth grade. Like, ten-year-old girls played Fashionscape, because it was like Barbies. You heard it here first, guys, if you like Fashionscape. You like playing Barbies. You're basically a ten-year-old girl. I gotta start making myself look like crap, so that people won't accuse me of that. Kinda look like crap now, to be honest, though, with the... <laughs> At least your outfit matches. I was... Oh, yeah, well, I actually just got this chest earlier. It was a big... It's a big deal. It gives, like, a big buff to... You winner. just got a buff chest. Congratulations. <laughs> and don't even say when you're going to get one in real life, because I'm working on that. <laughs> you are. You are. 
And I wasn't really sure whether to add that or not, but honestly, every time I listen back to it, <laughs> I just crack up so hard, so I thought maybe some people might like it. Anyways, here's a little bit of a CG update. So we finished our crystal armor set right on 180 KC. I'm gonna be a little more selective now on the CG clips that I do show. This one really came down to the wire, so here's the live commentary. Please. Oh, I have to hit so Two, hard right now. One, mate. I don't think it's happening. Oh, please. Two, please. No, I can't one, miss right now. Range. These little hits, man, it's not happening. Two, one, mage. Please. Come on, come on, one more hit. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. Oh, no, no, wait. Oh. <laughs> it didn't look like it was it, and then it was it. Man, that's what I love about CG. It gets you so, it gets the blood just flowing. It's beautiful. Did we get the reward for it? Nah. Well, hey there, kids. Can you help me count how many times he misses? One, two, Don't worry, dude, you're not the only one cringing right now. Anyways, yeah, we managed to pull it out despite the terrible streak of zeros. Oh. I don't even know why I get surprised by it. Alright, on to another even 10. Alright. Alright. Oh, that's a big 250. Feels pretty good. No reward there. Such a clean number. Alright, 251. Getting a little sleepy, but not really making that many mistakes. Oh, he's such a troll. 255. Twiggity schwa. Never mind. Okay, another even 10, 260. What are we gonna get? Disappointed, that's what. All right, there's another even 10 KC, and I am quite exhausted. Let's see what we get. Looks about right. All right, gonna go to bed now. Yep, just a bad dream. Dad, <laughs> go to sleep. I caved, guys. The the bug that wipes your inventory if the worlds go offline. I I can't get myself to stop worrying about it while I'm in there. For any other account that can bank, it's like no problem because you just use the deposit box. But for UIMs, it's terrifying. Probably goes without saying. So I've kind of decided to go work on the maxing side. Because I've still got I've still got some work that needs to get done. Construction being one that I've been wanted to get to 99 for a while, but just never set my nose to the grindstone there on it. 
that's kind of the direction this uh, series is going to go for the meantime while CG is, you know, under under duress, I guess you'd call it. So yeah, I've basically committed to this, by the way. Like, uh, I bought the plank sack and I'd have to drop that. There's no way to store it, so I'd have to straight up just drop that. It's locking an inventory spot is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, so I'm, com I'm committed with the plank sack here and yeah it's just it, it's something that's gonna get me to, to do it um the other thing is like i was thinking through it and construction at least the chopping part of it is like probably the most afk thing that i have in my arsenal towards max i'm learning blender so yeah that that's gonna require a little bit of attention so you know it, it kind of seems like the right time for working on something afk like construction Okay, so let me just go into why I'm standing here at Castle Wars. Over the course of, I don't know how long it's been, every night I do a suicide at Hespori, and I'll like just kind of, whenever I can, just kind of jump into Castle Wars games, sit, super AFK. It's worked out pretty well, and it's taken a while, but I finally have the 800 tickets, and the reason that's significant is you can buy the most expensive thing which i believe is the chest yeah and then it like the rest of the gold is like less than that so the reason that this is great is that all you need is 800 tickets to get all the collection log slots for castle wars because you can sell it back at the same value that you bought it at so that being said this is going to pop off uh, i'm gonna warn my clan about this actually <laughs> this is gonna this is gonna be crazy all right, so we just, we literally just buy. Oh yeah, that's gonna pop off like crazy. Hopefully it's not too loud. Buy, sell. All right, that's the end of that. <laughs> uh, what a nuisance, man. When someone does that in a clan, it just fills up the whole freaking thing. <laughs> all right, all right. So now that that's done, I've done a little bit of maths here. And so I can't store this stuff in a bank, obviously. With 800 tickets, I can get pretty close to storing all those tickets in a way that I can just like take them back out if I ever wanted to. Yeah, so what I decided to do was get the decorative sword, the gold one. Is that one you can freely put in and take out and then the full wizard outfit with two halos should get me pretty close and then this sword and then this sword and that's five tickets left over and all of this stuff because this is a full set i can put it in and take it out freely let's go store this in the poh if i'm not forgetting anything okay here we are this stuff should just go right in yeah, goes right in. Decorative sword goes in. Can easily take that out if I want to. Number two. And then we got Halos. Oh, I forgot to get the other sword. Anyways, like I don't even care about that five tickets really, but pretty sweet, huh? Takes forever, so I'm glad to get that done. But yeah, now I don't have anything super lazy and chill to do for AFK. Please let me know if you can think of anything. Oh, all right. And of course we have to... I have to get check the green log here. Yep. Had to verify I purchased everything. And there it is. Beautiful, isn't it? All right, so here we are in Pryptonus doing construction with UIM methods. Uh, I'm chopping the mahogany because I'm trying to get the collection logs done for mahogany homes. After I finish the collection logs, I'll just do mythical cape racks probably. Uh, but yeah, anyways, to continue on from what I was talking about earlier with the CG and the bug. Yeah, I'm just terrified, man. It, as many UIMs are, and eventually it got to me. Even though the risk is so small, that constant threat of wiping just kind of like weighs on you mentally and kind of gives you like a... Just like that added stress, it's hard to chill out at CG knowing that like something out of your control could wipe you. Again, even though it's such a small chance that it would happen, it's still there. There will be one episode in the future that's dedicated to construction, and that's where I'll be explaining UIM construction in depth. Right now I'm just doing mahogany homes to knock out collection logs. I promise the rest of this episode is not just construction.
if you're ever doing construction mahogany homes you come to this spot here always close that door please please close that door when you come in because i've been this guy shout out to that guy i've been this guy man it's so annoying when people don't close the door and the master farmer respawns and he just walks straight out the door because nobody closed it man please close the door please close the door so we got a standard youtuber hiccup here i recorded but i was in the wrong scene so what you were actually seeing was me killing fire watches on my hardcore so not super helpful anyway so we just hit 93 construction let's check the rewards really quick just to give you an update on the points i need amy's saw the blueprints and the supply crate to green the log so getting pretty close <laughs> That was unexpected. All right, collection logs from a random beginner clue nest. Speaking of collection logs, I was scouring the collection log to find something kind of AFK to replace the castle wars I was doing before. I came across the big fish, and so that's where I'm gonna be camped out for a little while for when I really need to AFK, you know? This has to be one of my favorite parts about playing UAM. Just little interactions like this, this guy. He sees my outfit and he's like, what galaxy are you in, bro? <laughs> Quick thought, right? So, I was thinking about stealing pets. I, I think that they kind of messed up by making the beaver a woodcutting pet. Just think about it, like, if you were to make a construction pet, like, think of a an animal, a creature that builds stuff. Like, beaver is the first thing that comes to my mind, personally. And then obviously, that leaves a vacancy for the woodcutting pet. In which case, I'd say throw in a woodpecker or something for woodcutting. Like, this might be a hot take, because people might like it the way it is or whatever, but like... Leave it in the comments if you can think of another creature in nature that that builds things, that is like known for building things. Cause that would make the most sense for a construction pet, am I right? Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> These keep hitting me by surprise, these collection locks. <laughs> I still need the elven signet, so I'm gonna be catching all the crystal implings I can. Ooh, guess I'll go out those. What up, dude? This is Lion from the future in the recording booth. This video is definitely not sponsored, I mean, as if I'm even big enough to get a sponsor yet. But I really need to give a promotion to someone very special. In fact, you probably wouldn't have even come across my channel if it wasn't for this guy. I'm talking about the Scold. Back when I was pondering how I could really make my series stand out on YouTube, I came across his channel. Hello ladies and gentlemen, have you ever wondered how do you get a character model from old school RuneScape into Blender so that you can make thumbnails and animations? Well. This is the tutorial for you. He's found this really cool niche where he teaches people Blender, but specifically for old school RuneScape. His tutorials are done so well, it makes it look really easy. And I mean, in my mind, it's pretty easy now because I've practiced it so much. But if you'd like to get your feet wet in the Blender scene, it really is a lot of fun. And there really is no better way to learn it than old school RuneScape. But please send this man some love. He is the goat of Blender and he's so helpful. His community is awesome. Oh, and he doesn't just do tutorials. Like he has gameplay content with Blender, kind of like I do. Oh, and one last quick note about Blender. It's free. I didn't know that. You might not have either. These clues always throw me off, dude. What? That is- This is not the first floor. This is the second floor. Stupid UK and their weird floor layout. Casket, let's go. Easy. Oh! Collection log, let's go. So I got all the points I needed to get all the collection logs here at Mahogany Homes. Let's grab the Hosidius blueprints. Nice. Okay, next Amy saw. Excellent. And supply crate. Oh, what? Wait, what? Already had that? Mahogany Helm's green log. Yeah, we're done. I'm just gonna use the rest of these mahoganies and we're on to the teak portion of the grind. While we're here, I'll just go ahead and uh, redecorate with the Hosidious and it should save it. Yeah, it gives me my twisted back. I wanna keep it. I guess we'll just go. Check it out really quick. I don't know if I've actually ever seen this layout in my house. You think it's nice, the walls, but like, 
Nothing fits the volcanic garden better than the twisted, in my opinion. Yeah, we'll probably never see this layout again. Back when I was doing the CG grind, I actually did the wilderness bosses late in the evening to work on combat achievements. As an ultimate Iron Man, there's really only one way to avoid risking everything that you own in the wilderness. That is with the use of death piling. UIMs did not get gravestones when those came into the game, instead they retained the old death pile mechanics. All of these items that you see will stay on the ground for one hour exactly. That basically gives you around 45 minutes to go about your business before you really need to get back to that or else it's all gone. These wilderness bosses are actually being reworked as I'm making this video. They've been a part of the game for a long time as they currently are, so I wanted to pay homage to that. I asked a few people to help me out as well. You probably never heard of them though. If I catch this freeze, he dies. <sighs> now I gotta re-gear. What are those guys doing at Callisto anyways? I see, that explains it. I think we'll do Venonatus instead right now. Why did that happen? No way. I'm like, oh! When will he live? What's on the menu today? Ah, look what we have here. Bro, <laughs> I can't catch a break, man. All right, let's try video. I hope you enjoyed that, but now I have to be the bearer of bad news. All of the clips that I got while killing wildy bosses were like right at the beginning of when I started recording, and I was having this blinking issue. I've since figured out what was causing it, but I really don't want to show you guys all this footage. Even watching it back has been such an eyesore. Here's just one quick example, I'm not going to show any more than this. I actually managed to escape this guy by running to the north and getting Gab. Is that Gab? I got Gab. Woo! Vedion was the last boss I took on of the three. All of my clips from Venonatus and Callisto are just hot garbage, honestly. I'm super grateful that this recording didn't get scuffed because this was when I finished in the wilderness. Actually, I take that back because I have Chaos Ellie and Demi bosses to take care of, but you know what I mean, like the big boys are done. Anyways, I just want to take a second to address the fact that they've drastically reduced the KC requirement for combat achievements out here. You used to have to do 100 kills each of these bosses. As a UIM, dude, this is such a stressful thing. Just think about having everything that you've worked for sitting on the ground somewhere, and a timer that you have to constantly be looking at. Oh yeah, and back then that timer did not pause on logout or disconnect, 
So you were literally just up the creek if you had a disconnection or any kind of real life emergency. For that reason I want to give a massive shout out to any UIMs that did this. The only one that I know of that documented this was UIM Loki. Much love bro. I'll put a link right here of his progress episodes when he spent hundreds of hours in the wilderness for this stuff. One more hit. Boom. Oh, we're done. Oh my gosh, that feels great. Okay, at this point I don't even really care about the loot. I'm just gonna check this right now while I'm thinking about it. Alright. So we're gonna go Callisto, 2 out of 2. Uh, Beninatus and Betty on 2 out of 2. We are done in the wilderness. I can't, well, I mean, KBD doesn't really count as wilderness, but oh my goodness, I'm so happy. Alright dudes, we're gonna call it a video there. Once again, just so much fun making these. Just a real quick reminder, I am on the warpath for 1k subs, so if I delivered in this episode, you know what to do. The special surprise I mentioned for it, it's well underway. Thank you so much to these wonderful gentlemen for being part of this episode's montage. After all, it wouldn't be the wilderness without some PKers, right? As for episode 4, I'm gonna keep you guys on your toes for this one. But I will give you a hint. It's showed up in every episode, but it hasn't been mentioned once. Oh yeah, and Happy New Year. <laughs>